This video is sponsored by Blue Flannel, helping keep T's arms concealed since 2019. Blue Flannel. Hello, Silver fans. This is T, and you're in the place to be for Silver Education, Acquisition, and Entertainment. Hey, heading to Harlan J. Burke in downtown Chicago. If you like coin shop videos, be sure to subscribe and hit that like button if you appreciate the effort. Spicy Mike, how are you, buddy? Hey, what's up? How you doing, T? I'm doing great. Hey, our last video together did really, really well. You, you know, whatever you had to say really resonated with people. People liked the travesty. I think that was what it was. <laughs> they like, they like to watch train wrecks. It, you know what? It put, it makes for a good story. Yes, it does. And so, hey, so what story do you have for me today, my friend? Well, so in 1836, the United States Mint started using a steam press, and everything made before that was made on a screw press. Okay. And what I wanted to show you was a couple of examples okay. of what these coins look like. Sure. So, if you look on this tray, sure. Uh, I think, yeah. So, there you go. Okay. That is an 1834 drip bust half dollar. Okay. Okay. The reason why I have it on there the way it is is to show you, if you look underneath it, the 1836, which is the first that was made on the steam press, is small enough that it was completely obscured. Oh. So they're smaller, they're smaller in diameter. And it's one of the easiest ways to tell screw press coins from steam press coins. Okay, so the steam, let me make a hypothesis here. The steam press had more power to flatten Absolutely. the coin more. Absolutely. Am I a genius or what? You are something. I'll tell you. <laughs> so as technology changes, the coinage changes, uh, purely based on what's available at the time. Yes. Same weight, same basic coin, okay. just two made two entirely different ways. What do coins like that retail for? They're really not that expensive. Okay, um, beautiful coins. You know, yeah, you can pick up drape bust half dollars in the hundred to two hundred fifty dollar range. Uh -huh. um, you could probably write even, somebody scratched it up a little bit there. A little bit. Yeah. And look, they've lived a hard life, some of them. Yeah, no kidding. But uh, but they're really fun to to look at, and the the designs are nice. Back when 50 cents probably bought you quite a 50 few cents was a week's wages. Yeah. Uh -huh. well, thanks for showing those off. What else you got, man? Um, I also brought for you something. Uh, this is things that you don't often see. Yeah. This. Okay. This is a Denver Mint souvenir set. Okay. So. So but, I assume uh, the Denver Mint had tours back in the day? The Denver Mint had tours. Uh -huh. What's most important about this is if you look at the year. So this is a 1983 oh. Denver tour set. Yeah. So they didn't make mint sets in 1982 or 1983. Okay. However, there were sealed sets that came from the gift shops in both the mints in Philadelphia and San Francisco. All right. So, so if, if you're you are, a collector. If you're a mint set collector. Yeah. You can use these to fill out your collection. Okay. There How many uh, were made in comparison to the years they made mint sets? Any idea? Don't know. Okay. I do know that they're scarce. These sell typically between twenty-five and and a hundred dollars. Okay. For the individual set, so that's just Denver. Mm -hmm. You have to buy a Philadelphia set too. Oh yeah. And in '83, the the Philadelphia set is by far the better set. Okay. Um, and 82 is the same way. There's uh -huh. a Philadelphia set and a Denver set. Huh. So those are just things you don't see every day. Are there still people out there that collect men's sets? Yes. Uh, are there not? I'm one of them. Okay. I do. I have okay. a set going all the way back to when they started putting them in the file filter. Okay. So that's 1959. Okay. And I consider that to be a complete set of clan coins. Okay. So 58 and prior? They were put into a cardboard. Okay. Where they gave you two of each coin. There was supposed to be one facing one, one facing the other way, but it didn't always get that way. Yeah. Uh, and the coins from those sets are really neat, but they're absolutely impossible to authenticate. Oh. Because you just push them in. Oh, cardboard. well, that makes sense. Yeah. They're not sealed. Okay. Right. Got it. Looks like you have a couple other items over there. I do. So this is... We talked a little bit, or Russ talked a little bit about the first coins that come off of the dies. Mm -hmm. And the first coins that come off of a die usually have a really nice cameo contrast to them. This is to show you that prior to 1974, mm -hmm. the Mint didn't care about cameo on proof sets. 
So we have this beautiful 1956, and look at the half dollar on that. Yeah. So that is absolutely premium, would yeah. be deep cameo in anybody's book. PCGS would love that coin, except there's no contrast on the reverse. Hmm. This was made from a brand new obverse die oh. and an in progress reverse die. Well, at least they got the right die on the right side, and the obverse is beautiful. <laughs> if you send this coin off to be graded, it'd probably come back with a plus or a star mm -hmm. because it is truly exceptional. Yeah. But it's not a cameo coin. And okay. this is why the cameo coins are so rare uh -huh. and why there's so much fun to collect. Yeah. That's a whole niche in itself, isn't it? It's, it's one of my favorite niches. So uh -huh. I like cameo coinage from 1964, actually from 1967 back, because the special mint sets have cameo coins in them as well. Yeah, there's a lot of novices and people have kind of gotten drawn into coin collecting through silver stacking and uh, define the word cameo. That's the term that we decided to use in so numismatics. It's the contrast between uh, the, the part surfaces and the devices. Protrude, protrude the, the raised part. Right, so the, the fields, which is the, the flat spot, right. and the devices, which is the raised spots. Okay, got it. The raised spot is called uh, the device. devices. Okay, devices. So that's any lettering, that's okay. the person that's on it, that's, okay. you know, the bell, the eagle, those are devices. Uh -huh. Yeah, sure is uh, fun to learn these things, I'll tell you. Yeah. Uh, since we're doing a show and tell, you got anything else? I got one more. Okay. So, there's been a lot of talk lately about CAC grading. Uh -huh. And a lot of people not being really happy with the grades that they're seeing from CAC grading. Yeah, they're really tough, right? And the reason why I wanted to talk to them is because I wanted to show you a couple of the coins that CAC has graded okay. and why I think they're exceptional. Okay. So the first one is a beautiful, beautiful 1819 large scent. Yeah, look at that color. This coin has a trace of the original red to it. Uh -huh. It is absolutely uncirculated in its mint state. Okay. So this coin is just as it was in 1819. The except DM for a little to brown, right? Yes. So okay. CAC was a little tougher on this. I would imagine, and I don't know for a fact, but I would imagine that this was graded red brown. Okay. By the last grading company. Yes. And CAC decided to grade it brown. Uh huh. Uh, the color is not something they guarantee anyway, uh -huh. so eventually they assume that the coin is going to turn completely brown. Is uh, red more desirable than brown? Red is definitely more desirable because it's original, uh -huh. but uh, it's hard to find. And this, uh, the the CAC slabs, I uh, the CAC slabs are just to test it out. I really like them. They're nearly indestructible. They're yeah. really hard to break. Uh huh. Which is a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Somebody said when they first saw them that they looked fragile. Mm, yeah, yeah. Well, they feel pretty hefty and sturdy in the hand. So that was a really exceptional coin. But the CAC sticker, though, we were talking about this at Coin Club, uh, it's basically just a part of the label. Uh, it's not uh, an additional sticker that's added to it. Correct. Okay. Interesting. Nice. And last but not least, this is a coin that is just wow. Ooh, a 66? That's a two and a half dollar gold in '66. Yeah, and that coin is a monster. Must have sat in somebody's sock drawer for about a hundred years. Or Had to like have, that. because that coin has never ever yeah. been banged around. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a beauty. Look at that. I think that in many cases the stuff that CAC is being hard on mm -hmm. deserves it. Yeah, and they're just trying to really, really. Um, hit the market with it they're mm -hmm. trying to they're trying to get the right grade mm -hmm. not necessarily the grade it's been but the correct grade and in some cases that means downgrades and if if, if you got the goods this really just verifies yes. you really do have the goods and there's no question about it i think that the little bit tougher grading that people are finding with them is only going to build to a premium got it well i appreciate the time and your uh, patience with a. Uh, uh, you know, someone with a quest to learn more about coin collecting, as is so many of my viewers. Thanks for the time, buddy. Always. Pleasure.
In case you didn't know, Mike has a podcast. It's called The Coin Show Podcast. Be sure to check it out. The link is down in my video description. And a special thank you goes to these channel members who support my efforts to bring you videos just like this one. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for your support. And thank you for watching. Now let me show you what I purchased. And uh, you might have noticed these same coins in another video. I made a couple videos while I was at Harlan J. Burke. The last time I went there, I did kind of a twofer and shot multiple videos. I picked these bad boys up. Look at that color. And some of these went in my auction last Saturday. And the rest will go in my auction this Saturday. In case you didn't know, I do auctions on the weekend. And they're a lot of fun. Even if you just come and hang out and talk coins and bullion, it's a lot of fun. I also picked up this bad boy. And uh, I don't know. I think I might hold on to this one. It was featured in this particular video right here. Mike and I had a real good time with that one. And uh, I'm probably going to hold on to that one uh, unless somebody makes me a crazy offer. But I, I kind of like it for sentimental reasons. It was part of a really good show that Mike and I did together. Speaking of good shows, take a look at the videos that are on your screen. A couple other options there for you. If you haven't gotten enough coin talk yet, be sure to click on one of those two videos and check them out to see more. Once again, everybody, I really appreciate you being here. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. Toot.